All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, you know. <laughs> all right, greetings, scholars. So, you know, we have at least one, so we're going to press forward. Uh, you know, people are going to have the work cut out for them. They're going to have to play catch up. Um, so welcome, scholars. Let me see. As far as announcements, um, yeah, we're just kind of moving along. Um, I think we have three sections we're trying to get through this week. So we're trying to finish out chapter one, get through sections one, four, one, five, and one, six. So idealistically, if we can do two sections today, that would be great. Uh, my intent is to pretty much kind of take my time since I'm using these as, as my first official recordings. So, you know, I'll probably just kind of take my time and go through each example. And then if we run out of time, I'll more than likely release you all. But I'll probably finish. I'll probably keep streaming and recording just to get the complete section uh, so I can use it uh, going forward. Um, I'll. Uh, just as a reminder, all of our assignments for the semester are available on my open math with the exception of the exams. The exams have scheduled release dates, right? Um, uh, with our assignments on my open math, we get unlimited attempts. The system is set to take our highest score. And you can submit any assignment late. Uh, but if you're submitting an assignment late, uh, there's a 5% late penalty. So the highest you can earn on a late assignment is 95%. But you, you get unlimited late passes as well. So, you know, don't feel like you got to save them. No, I'm, I'm going to make sure that you have unlimited late passes. Um, it is uh, it is a good idea to collaborate. I would encourage you all to like work together. Right. But I know it's tough because I don't know. And and we I think the course has had to merge. I had an asynchronous course and I guess the institution decided to merge my asynchronous with my synchronous. So, you know, sooner or later, I know they'll find their way here. Um, if you were in the asynchronous course and you're hearing this message, just make sure that you're using the updated, you know, because I'm going to close out the, those, the account on my open math for the asynchronous. And so make sure that you're in the synchronous account. Um, I'll probably do that after class. I meant to do it earlier, just, you know, time kind of got away from it. Uh, I can't think, it, think of anything else. Hope everyone had a happy holiday, all right, the King holiday. And I'll, let's just take some time to go through at least one or two, at least one section today. <clears throat> also, as we go through the presentation, if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself to get my attention or type in the chat. I am monitoring the chat. Um, and otherwise, let's get the party started. We'll just go ahead and get started. Um, there might be somebody designated as like a co-host or whatever if you see somebody in the waiting room just let them in i think you all let each other in in the waiting room and that's perfectly fine so like if you just notice somebody in the waiting room just go ahead and let them in uh, I, th I thought i had changed the settings to let people in automatically 
but I know that like um, I know that you all let each other in, and that's fine. Uh, can I see it here? Let me see. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. So uh, with today, we're going to go ahead and, and start off with section 1.4 polynomials, uh, exploring radicals and rational exponents. Sorry, that's the wrong subtitle. <laughs> you can ignore that subtitle. I thought I changed it, but I guess I didn't. But we'll start with section 1.4 polynomials. A few objectives here. In this section, you will identify the degree and leading coefficient of polynomials, add and subtract polynomials, multiply polynomials, use the use FOIL to multiply binomials, and perform operations with polynomials in several several variables. Right? Okay, let's see this in action. Uh, the line in Saudi Arabia. In the heart of Saudi Arabia, Arabia rises the line, a groundbreaking building design for the future. Uh, de let's delve into, we'll delve into algebra as we explore concepts of polynomials and how they may be used in shaping the, the intricate architecture and spatial efficiency of this visionary project. Join us in discovering how mathematics, mathematical precision transforms the line into a masterpiece of innovation, bridging the realms of algebra and urban development. Right, if, if you haven't heard of the line, the concept is, and I think it's in Saudi Arabia, and they kind of like cleared out, I think it's like 40 miles long, and it's supposed to be maybe, I think it's like 20 stories high. It might be higher than that. Uh, and it's just, a, it's a building that's supposed to be like 40 miles long, 20 stories high, something like that, some ridiculous dimensions like that. It's in the desert, but it's built near like some water source, right? And it's, it's basically like supposed to be a city within a building. Like you don't have to, like everything that you need for, for life is supposed to be in this building. From grocery stores to like parks and recreation, gyms, uh, whatever it is you need, you're going to be able, and it, you're going to be able to find it in this building. It's a really interesting concept. It will be the first of its kind. Uh, I know if once it's done, I do want to go visit it. Like I'm going to make it a point to visit just to see it. I had a friend, one of my former students. Um, she visited Dubai. She was like, "Fight for you would love Dubai. Like it's just like, like <laughs> ridiculous, buddy. Like just it's just really lavish. A lot of things going on." Over so she she highly encouraged me to go visit it. So maybe I'll I'll put those together, you know, whenever I decide to go, you know, God willing, All right? So and with the line, you know, with the construction of this building, they definitely will be using um, polynomials in their calculations, right? Um, using it to it's used a lot in construction and like, you know, in um, the the design of, you know. These, these buildings or edifices or whatever. Okay, so let's look at polynomials. A polynomial is, is an expression that can be written in this form, where each real number ai is called the co coefficient, the number a not uh, that is not multiplied by a variable is called the constant, and each product a, ai xi is a, is a term of a polynomial. The highest power of the variable that occurs in the polynomial is called the degree of the polynomial. The leading term is a term with the highest power and its coefficient is it's called the leading coefficient, all right? So a, a polynomial is just a finite sum of monomials. And a monomial is one, one term where you have some real coefficient times a variable raised to a non-negative integer exponent, right? So like a monomial is going to be something like, like 2x to the power of 5, x squared, 3, right? All of those are examples of monomials. And a polynomial is just a finite sum of those monomials, right? Um, and that's that's basically what that passage there is saying. So given a polynomial expression, identify the degree and the leading coefficient. Um, so find the highest power of x to determine the degree. So the degree of a polynomial is the highest power on any variable x. Identify the term containing the highest power of x to find the leading term, right? So the leading term is going to be the term that has the highest power. And identify the coefficient of the leading term. That's going to be your leading coefficient, right? So the degree is the highest power in any x. The term that has the highest power is the leading term. And then the constant at the front of that term is called the leading coefficient. Okay. Sometimes these texts like to give you uh, expressions mixed up or out of order. So you have to identify, you know, uh, which term has the highest power. Also, if you're asynchronous, Right now, I'm under the impression that to get attendance, you're supposed to be present in attendance. Not, it's no longer asynchronous, which means 
it's not really a discussion. So I'd have to talk to my uh, supervisor to see if you can still get attendance credit by doing the discussions. But with it being synchronous, it's expected that you're live to get attendance credit. Oh yeah, and you don't have to. I can see. I, I, so attendance is taken automatically when you get into the Teams call. Um, when whenever you show up, it, it automatically logs when you guys show up when you leave. Right, so I can see how long you all have been here when, when you arrive and stuff of that nature. And basically, what I do is at the end of each session, I pull up the automatic attendance records for for this session, and I say, okay, this person was here, this person was here, everybody else was absent. Right. Um, so best thing is just show up. Maybe like I, I would encourage you, I recommend show up maybe five minutes before class starts, and then you know just let it ride. All right, just let it ride until the end. Uh, if if I do acknowledge that sometimes this stuff can be like, like droning. It can kind of drone or kind of like drill into your mind. Then just, just let it ride. Like I, I usually don't pressure you all too much while we're live. So as long as you're at least on some level present, you know, idealistically you will be engaged in asking questions and getting your questions answered or whatever. But at a minimum, I feel like it's not too much to ask to just show up and, and at least be present in some form for the, for the entirety of class. Okay, let's look at this example. But yeah, as long as you've gotten into the call, uh, you've gotten your attendance credit. Um, I don't think there's anybody in the waiting room. Oh, yeah, it says invited, see all. I don't think anybody's in the waiting room. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, I need to invite, oh, they don't have the thing. Yeah, that's not their fault. I guess I need to send out, send out another announcement. Uh, let me do this right now, actually. Oh, but I'm recording. I guess I'll just have to remember to do it afterwards. Okay. So, let me think. I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's go. So, let's let's take a look at this example. Um, identifying the degree and leading coefficient of a polynomial. For the following polynomials, identify the degree, the leading term, and the leading coefficient. So, the degree on the polynomial is going to be the term with the highest power. So, for instance... For part A, all right, the term with the highest power is, so let me see, the degree, let me, let me make a table. So it's asking for what, the degree? I'm going to abbreviate this as the leading term and then the leading coefficient, all right? And so we have what? Part A, part B, and part C. Okay. Uh, let's go. I guess we can go like this. And then, I guess let's go like this. Let's copy. Now we, I know we don't need that much space for the degree. Let's paste. Leading term. We do something about like that. And we don't really need that much space for these either, but paste. We're just going to go with it. Copy. Paste. Paste. And um, I will say that it does seem like the administrators are like when I when I update my attendance, it seems like they are using it and like tracking down the students. I've had a couple of students that was like, oh, yeah, my my uh, my counselor was saying, you know, this said any other. And yeah, because I because we need that. So I see as long as they are using it to track everybody down, that's a good thing. Right. So, you know, I, I you know, that's that's I'm impressed about that. So for part A, right, the degree is going to be the highest power in any term. So the degree in this case is going to be three, right? So the leading term, again, the term with the highest power is going to be that negative four X cubed. And the leading coefficient is going to be the negative four. For B, the degree, the highest power is going to be five. So that means our leading term is going to be five T to the five. And our leading coefficient is going to be five. For C, the highest power is three. So the degree of the polynomial is three. 
the leading term is going to be that negative p cubed. And the leading coefficient is going to be, I guess I'll put it here, negative one, right? Um, usually with the polynomials, we do write them in descending power order. Uh, so you can rearrange them because of the commutative property of addition, right? Two plus three is the same as three plus two, right? Two minus three is the same as negative three plus two, right? So you can, it's close, it's commutative uh, under addition and Remember, you can rewrite subtraction as adding with a negative, right? So you can you can always rearrange them and put them in descending power order, okay? Uh, I think, and you can see all that here. I feel like everything that we have is good, so I'm just going to keep moving. So adding and subtracting polynomials. We can add and subtract polynomials by combining like terms. Uh, and so like terms, uh, they have the same variables raised to the same power, right? So given, given multiple polynomials, add or subtract them uh, to, sim to simplify the expressions, we combine like terms and then simplify and write in standard form. All right, okay, let's just see this in action. So here we ask to find the sum. Okay, so I'm gonna get a copy of this. We are, uh, yeah, actually I'm, I'm gonna use what's already here. So let's highlight our like terms, right? So let's use, Is this down here? Is this some food under there? Oh, okay. What are you doing? What's under there? Huh? Move, move. Oh. Is that your dog? Here, get this. Here. Eat it. <laughs> Somehow, I know exactly what happened. She brought her dog because she'll like take pieces of her dog food and put it in random places and I don't be known as there. So there was a piece under the pillow on the floor. No. Anyway, we found it. Okay. Um, uh, it's probably better if I just rewrite it. I, I was going to try to use what's already, already there. So let me start by getting a copy. Uh, so we have this 12x squared plus 9x minus 21 in parentheses plus 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 5x plus 20, right? So let's let's highlight our like terms, right? So we got this 12x squared and an 8x squared, right? Style, uh, let's go orange first, right? So those are like terms because they have the same variable raised to the same power. You got, we have this 9x with this negative 5x. Uh, I guess we can go green, right? Those are like terms because they have the same variable rates to the same power. And then we have these constant terms. So I highlighted the like terms. Let's go, I guess we can go purple. All right? So then when we add these together, we combine the like terms. So notice the 4x cubed, there is nothing that corresponds with it, so it just stays as 4x cubed. We got the 12x squared plus 8x squared to give us 20, 20x squared, okay? And then we have 9x minus 5x gives us a 4x. And then negative 21 plus 20 gives us negative 1. Okay, so 424, negative 1. 424, negative 1. Okay, so we can check our answers to these types of problems using a graphing calculator to check. Graph the problem as given along with the simplified answer. The two graphs should be equivalent. Be sure to use the same window to compare the graphs. Using different windows can make the expression seem equivalent when they are not. Um, and so, like, if you don't have a graphing calculator, uh, a couple of sites that you can use for free virtual uh, virtual graphing. Uh, let me see. One site, I know a popular site amongst the students. There's one called desmos.com, and it's, a, it's basically a free virtual graphing calculator. Another one that was introduced to me originally is called GeoGebra, G-O, 
Algebra.com. And you might, it's going to take a little bit of like digging to see how to use it properly. So whenever you, whatever it is you're trying to do on these sites, just do a Google search. How do I graph blah, blah, blah in Desmos.com? Or how do I graph blah, blah, blah in GeoGebra, right? And they'll just follow the instructions what somebody else does and then augment it to fit your question, right? But those are free uh, graphing utilities. I see. And she went to see. Oh, she's making. <sighs> She goes and get her dog food and then brings it over to the carpet and chews it up. And now she's getting crumbs everywhere. So now it's like, I have to take the carpet and knock, take it outside and knock, knock it out. Instead, if she just ate it at her thing or put it someplace, but she's a dog. So I mean, it's just, what are you going to do? Getting upset is just raising my blood pressure for no reason. But I mean, I, I'll clean it up. It's just, I didn't even know if she was doing that. But anywho, uh, these are free. Uh, graphing calculator or graphing utilities, free graphing utilities. Let's see, she doesn't get all the crumbs. She she does a decent job, but no, she doesn't get them all. So I'm gonna have to take that outside, and it's like a brand new like. <sighs> so frustrating. <laughs> Okay, so I feel good about that one, right? Okay, let's go on. So subtracting polynomials, right? So the main takeaway here, right, we have one polynomial minus another. We need to distribute this negative, right? We need to distribute that negative, okay? So we're going to rewrite the subtraction as addition. So the first one just stays as is. We have the 7x to the 4 minus x squared plus 6x plus 1. Now, if we distribute the negative, now the second polynomial is going to become negative 5x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. I see she's looking at me like, what? <laughs> she keeps going to get her biscuits. They bring them to the carpet. But I mean, it's, I can just pick it up and dust it outside. It'll be okay. So, okay. So let's highlight our like terms, right? X to the four, there's only one that has X to the four. Uh, we got some X squares, this guy along with this guy. All right, so those are like terms. We got this X to the power of one with this one. This will go green. And then the constant terms are like terms. Okay, so then if we combine like terms, x to the 4 is the only one, so that stays as 7x to the 4. The x cubed, that's the only one, so that's going to stay five, minus 5x five cubed. And then with the x squared, negative 1 plus 2 is a positive 1, so plus x squared. 6 minus 3 is a positive 3. And then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Okay. Seven negative five, one three negative one. Seven negative five, one three negative one. Okay, so notice, notice in theirs, first they distributed a negative sign like we did, all right? They're missing a three. Yeah, they're missing, they're missing a three there, but then they brought it in on the next line. Then they grouped their like terms, so the ones that were like terms, they put them together. Uh, wait a minute. X squared and 2X, oh, well, they already combined it there. Anywho, anywho. Uh, note that finding the difference between two polynomials is the same as adding the opposite of the second polynomial to the first, all right? So again, we, we can always rewrite subtraction as, subtraction is the same as adding a negative, right? Okay. So then multiplying two, num two, two polynomials. Uh, given the multiplication of two polynomials, use the distribu distributive property to simplify the expression. Multiply each term of the first polynomial by each term of the second, and then combine like terms to simplify. 
Um, okay. So I saw a technique that I actually liked. Um, they basically used the table, right? Uh, so for instance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt the table method that I saw. So like if we do the longer one across the top, so say we had our 3x squared, we had our minus x and our 4, and then the other one along the side. Let me see. Okay. And um, let's see, the binomial, we have a 2x and a 1, right? So then we just like multiply each one, right? So for instance, if we said 2x times 3x squared, that's going to give us what? 6x to the power of 3, right? So that one is going to be 6x to the power of 3. Then if we said 2x times a negative x, negative 2x squared. Negative 2x squared. Okay. 2x times 4 gave us what? 8x. And then if 1 times each of those are going to be themselves. Okay. So then 3x squared minus x plus 4. And then we combine our like times. Let, let me highlight the like terms, right? So I'm going to do this. I know that and this, right? We'll do that in blue. And I know it's going to get a little bit off initially, but I'll, I'll put it back. So those are like terms that we'll combine. And these are like terms. Style, we'll do them in orange. And then I want to capture this and that. Okay. Oh, and then uh, let me just do this one in a different color. Okay, so we know that there's there are no like terms. So then we just combine like terms, right? So then the first one is just what six x six x cubed. Uh, the squared, so 3 plus negative 2 is a positive 1. So we're going to just take plus x squared. 8 minus 1 is a 7. And then the 4 of the constant stands up. All right, let's keep going. So we can uh, six one seven four six one seven four, right? Uh, we can use a table to keep track of our work as shown as table one. Write one polynomial across the top and the other down the side. For each for each box in the table, multiply the terms for that row by that term in the column. Then I'll add all the terms together, combining like terms and simplify. Yeah, that's just, that's what we did. There's even another. There's even at least another technique, and I'll show it if, if there's something similar pops up again. 
So then using the FOIL method to multiply binomials, a shortcut called FOIL is sometimes used to find a product of two binomials, right? Bi meaning two, right? Uh, it's called FOIL because we multiply the first term, the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last. So FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. And it's just a way for us to multiply each term of the first polynomial by each term of the second whenever we have like um, one binomial times another binomial, right? So given two binomials, use FOIL to simplify the expression, multiply the first terms of each binomial, the outer terms of each binomial, the inner terms of each binomial. Sorry. Multiply the first terms of each binomial, then multiply your outer terms, multiply the inner terms, and then multiply the last term in each binomial, add the products and combine like terms, right? Easy, let, I feel like this will sink in once we work with an example or two. So here we actually use FOIL to multiply the binomials, right? Okay. So let me start by getting a copy of the original. We have this 2x minus 18 times 3x plus 3, right? And again, I am monitoring the chat, so feel free if you have questions, if I'm going too fast or if anything is not clear, feel free to either type in the chat or unmute yourself to get my attention and we can talk about it. Otherwise, I'm just going to power through, right? So if we're using FOIL, right, let me see. Uh, we'll go first, outer, uh, let's use a different color, inner, And I guess we'll do this one for last. All right, FOIL. So, the first refer to these two. All right, these are the first. All right, so we, if we multiply those, 2x times 3x gives us what? 6x squared. All right, so that's going to be 6x squared. Outer, so outer, these are the two terms on the outside, right? So multiply the outer terms. So then three times two gives us what, 6x? And then inner, inner refers to the two terms on the inside, which are these two. Uh, 18 times three is 30 plus 24, looks like it's a 54, negative 54. And then last refers to the, the last terms of each binomial, right? So then 3 times 18, negative 54. Then we combine like terms, all right? And our like terms in this case, these two guys right here, right? So then ultimately we'll have 6x squared uh, minus 48x. Minus 54. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 6, 48, and 54. 6, 48, and 54. And here we have a type version of what we just experienced. So then uh, some other special case trinomials. Or polynomials. First, we have the perfect square trinomials. When a binomial is square, the result is the first term square added to double the product of double the product of both ter both terms, and then the last term squared. Right. So, when is again a perfect square trinomial, what they're saying is, if we square this this binomial, the result's going to be the first term squared plus two times the first times the second term plus the last term squared, right? First term squared, two times the first times the second plus the last term squared, right? Or if that's too much, right? This means that binomial times itself twice, right? So then you can just FOIL. If you FOIL, combine like terms and simplify, you'll get here, right? So as long as you, you get FOIL, you know, again, you can rewrite this guy as this, FOIL, and then you get this, right? So that's, you can just use FOIL there as well. Given a binomial square, uh, using a formula for a perfect square trinomial, square the first term, square the last term. Uh, for the middle of the trinomial, double the products of the two terms, add and simplify. So that's fine. 
So we're asked to expand this perfect square trinomial or expand this, uh, the square of this binomial, right? Okay. Uh, we could FOIL, or if we wanted to use the perfect square trinomial concept, we square the first term, so it's going to be 3x quantity squared. We're also going to square the last term, so that's going to be negative 8 quantity squared. And then we need to say plus 2 times each term, so 2 times 3x times the negative 8. So then, oh, so then um, if we expand and simplify, 3 squared is going to be, that's going to be a 9x squared. 6 times 8 is negative 48x. And then 8 times 8 is a positive 64. Right? Again, uh, for the square of that linear binomial, you could say that binomial times itself, FOIL, combine like terms, simplify, and you should get to the same conclusion. 9, 48, and 64, 9, 48, and 64. Okay. We're almost done with this section. So this is uh, another special case called difference of squares. Um, I'm going to do it in reverse. So, you know, if you have one term squared, minus another term squared, that's going to be the same as a plus b times a minus b, right? In other words, if you said a plus b times a minus b, then that's going to result in a squared minus b squared. Again, that's a special, that's a special case. Uh, it's called difference of squares, right? Notice we're going from, we're going from multiplying and finishing with the special case. We can also work backwards, right? We can start with the a squared minus b squared and and work work in reverse to get to the a plus b times a minus b. That's called factoring, right? So this is actually a special factoring case. It's called difference of squares, right? And we'll see that uh, momentarily. So given a binomial multiplied by a binomial with the same terms but opposite sign, find a difference of squares. Square the first term of the binomial, square the last term, subtract the squares from the, of the last term from the square of the first term. Okay, let's see it in action. Now, if you didn't use a difference of squares concept directly, again, if you FOIL, those two middle terms would cancel out, and then you're going to finish with a squared minus b squared. So honestly, in this case, as long as you've gotten FOIL down pat, that's all you really need, right, for, this, for these last couple of cases, right? But if we wanted to apply difference of squares, it's saying... Um, so this is going to be equal to the first term squared minus the second term squared, right? Uh, again, if you're not confident in this, just FOIL, combine like terms, you know, and simplify, right? So then that's going to be what? 81x squared minus 16. Something squared minus something squared. Friend of mine just sent me an image of some food that she made, and I'm like, oh, it looks so scrum diddly umptious. Like, I totally want to eat it. I'm like, mm. I don't know. I feel like I'm always hungry. <laughs> but I probably don't be eating it. Up. I was trying to eat right before class, and then I got distracted and caught up. And so, and then I was eating like when class was starting out. And I'm picking some grapes now as I kind of like do this explanation. But I'm eating the grapes because like my mouth is kind of dry. And so it's, I'm kind of also getting the moisture from it too. Okay. And it's so refreshing. I love like when I'm thirsty, like eating fruit, because you get the juice, it's sweet, it's fiber, so it's like food, you know? It's not like just drinking water. Like, only time I really seem like I appreciate water by itself is like if I'm exercising, like running or, you know, working out or whatever. But other times, like when I try to drink water, it like dries me out. And I saw something recently, like, that was like water by itself strips the cells of its nutrients. It almost needs to be like enriched water with like um, electrolytes or some other kind of like mineral water or something. Uh, so that when you drink it, it's, re it's replacing the nutrients that it's trying to strip away. 
And I think that's what I've been experiencing for a good portion of my life. And so now it's like, okay, I try to, I try to have enriched water whenever possible. Another thing is, so I go to like this local health food store to get my water. I mean, because it's supposed to be alkaline water. Um, at some point, I plan to just get my own alkaline filtration system and just install it in the house. Uh, because, you know, you know, they can tell you anything, you know, and they, they kind of like fancy doodad or, you know, hood up or whatever. You know, they can be lying, all right? Or it could be malfunctioning and they just not say anything. So, but I, I'm saying, I'm sharing the story because I noticed that like the last time or so when I've gone, they kind of tasted metallic. You know, it tasted a little weird. And so I got this bright idea to like, oh, well, let me run the water through like a Brita filter system. And lo and behold, when I ran the water that I was, you know, and it's not expensive. It's like, I don't know, 30 cents a gallon, you know, something like that, 40 cents a gallon. But when I ran the water through the Brita filter, like that that metallic taste was gone. The water was like smooth to the taste. It didn't have any kind of lingering weird aftertaste or anything. So... Yeah, so, like, that's my favorite thing to do. Like, I really enjoy my water. Um, and I've been going there since I was in college. That's Damn, has it been two decades? It's been almost two decades. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. So, anywho, uh, let me see. We, we're doing pretty good on time, so let's keep going. Yeah. All right, so multiplying the polynomials came containing several variables. Okay, so with this one... Now, I mean, honestly, what it is, again, we just need to make sure that each term of the first polynomial is multiplied with each term of the second polynomial, and then we combine like terms. So, like, this x needs to be multiplied with each term, right? This 4 needs to be multiplied with each term. Uh, I think this time I'm going to try the vertical technique for multiplying, all right? So, for instance, what I mean is... If we have 3x minus 2y plus 5, uh, but this one isn't going to work out as nicely as I, as I would like it to. Um, and then we have this x plus 4. Again, I'm multiplying these, right? So then 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times a negative 2y is a negative 8y. 4 times 3 is 12x. Okay. Then if I say x times 5, that's going to be 5x. I'm going to line up my like terms. So plus 5x. Um, x times a negative 2y is going to be a negative 2xy. And then x times 3x is going to be 3x squared. Then I just want to combine like terms. Right, so we all I think we all we ended up only having one like term, so then, um, but but notice that I intentionally lined up my like terms, right? So everything else was unlike, so that's why I said this one was kind of weird. Uh, let me shrink this down just a little bit to give myself some space. Okay, so then if we combine like terms. 3x squared minus 2xy plus, uh, what is that? 17x minus 8y plus 20. That looks good. Can we paste? Nice. Okay. 3, 2, 17, 8, 20. 3, 2, 17, 8, 20. Okay. All right. Okay, so that officially brings us to the end of 